Hello and welcome to my new tutorial series on how to teach you how to make a dice roller. But of course, it's not just going to be a dice roller, it's also going to include several other lessons which I might not have te taught you in the past. Now let's just get into this. Now this is a bare um, folder right here, except that I do have some images in here for um, some images we'll be implementing later, but they're just some stuff that I created myself. But let's just get in here and make a new package and start fresh on our code. Again, we're going to call this main. Now, this episode um, might be a bit short, but because um, it, it's mainly going to be all the infrastructure we will need to actually start up. Now, in the past, I've used Swing to make the GUI, as you've seen you know, by my um, physics simulator tutorial, but this time we're not going to be using Swing. Not only because Swing is not um very doesn't play nice with the um, abstract Windows toolkit I used in the past with all the graphics objects and the drawing, how I drew manually to the screen to the window before instead of using some stuff that you p other people normally suggest. So this time I'm going to be not using Swing at all, and that'll be more friendly. So. First, we're actually going to need a window. Now, in the past, I used J frame, and the J there means that I, I, it has to do with swing, you know, like all the J buttons and J panels. This time, it's going to be just frame, and instead of making it static like I had in the past, it's going to be completely integrated. I'm going to use um, more integration instead of using static, because static things aren't um, normally thread safe. So, if I can, whenever I can start typing correctly, so we'll just set up our normal beginning methods, and we'll be able to get to work here soon. <laughs> now again, I apologize for um, a long absence I might have had in the past, but you know, thought it's a, it's a Saturday, I might as well get some stuff done, even though things have been a lot very busy between you know high school and college classes and marching band and a whole bunch of other things. Now we're going to, um, up here, we're going to make two final variables. One will be a string. That will be the title of the frame. And we'll just call this a dice roller. And the next one will just be the dimension object that determines the size of our stuff. Now, I think uh, for now, we might have to change it, but we'll just start with 600 wide and 200 because it's not going to have that big of an interface, I wouldn't think, because all it is going to be is, you know, some buttons and an image to display the output of this dice roller. It'll also, you know, have coins and stuff, but it'll have several different die dice that you can roll. Like, you know, if you ever played, you know, um, role-playing games and such, then you need... There's a lot of dice with several things. Now, the di one of the big differences between using the frame and the J-frame is that, if you remember, the J-frame had a very nice method called set default close operation, which means, you know, the whole program, your whole program would stop as soon as you press the X button on it. But now, not that simple. So we have to implement another interface, which will be called window listener. We're also going to have to implement a runnable, as I have in the past, because, um... So we can actually um, run it on a new thread. So that's um, a lot of methods for um, the window listener, but you'll be happy to hear that most of them are we're not going to be using at all. Like we don't need any of these, and we don't need the window deiconified or iconified. So all I have to do is make those look better. Then window closed, we will need. And then window closing, we will need. Now the difference between windows closing, window closing is what happens whenever you press on the X button. Window closed is what happens when the window that is being listened to is um, is uh, disposed of, which we will call. Actually, no, <laughs> don't want to make run that small because we are definitely going to be using run. Now before we actually make the window and everything we need. We're going to add just a couple more methods because what we will need is public void draw because, you know, we're going to be drawing to the screen and just putting that in a different method is more useful. Now, what we're going to do for our basic um, threading here is we're going to have a couple private booleans 
we're going to have is running, which I have used in the past, and then is done, which is going to be used to detect when it's done running, just to make sure everything has already been cleaned up, and then that, then we can actually close everything down, and then we're going to have an image, which we're going to, it's going to be the image buffer. This is what we're going to use to implement double buffering. Well, um, yeah, it's that's what you call it. So basically, when you draw directly to the screen, I mean, not like the screen, the window is going to be on your screen, and you can either draw directly to that, which um, can be hazardous. Like you, if you um, draw too many things too fast, and your graphics card can't handle such things, you can see like tearing or just um, um, uh, you know the image just strobing and going in and out really fast. So double buffering will help us do that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use another new thing, which is a graphics 2D. Now this is like the graphics objects, graph graphic objects you have seen in the past, except that it provides a um, it provides a lot more compatibility. Well, when I say that, it has several more features that we can use. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah, and we need to cast it. Now casting it won't do anything. Trust me. It'll just you know upgrade the graphics to a graphics 2D, and then of course at the end of every tick we want to di dispose it so it relinquishes all of its resources. Because if we just make one of these every single tick and we don't dispose of them, then they're going to build up and things are going to go real bad, real fast. Now uh, let's just might be jumping all over the place right now, but you know just setting up infrastructure. Now we're going to add the window listener, and of course this is the window listener. And then, you know, just some other stuff. Set size. Then set title. And then what we're going to do, we're going to actually make the image buffer something. Oh, image buffer equals frame dot create image of size dot all caps, since it's final, size dot width and size dot height and then is running equals true then is done equals false because we're not gonna be done when we just started and then finally we'll make it so you can actually see it then running will just be while is running um, we'll have stuff in essence we'll have draw and of course, we don't want to take up the entire power of your processor, so we're going to have it sleep every 50 milliseconds. That means um, it will do everything in this loop 20 times a second. So then, I mean, we're never going to interrupt it ourselves, ourselves, but just in case, we always need this catch here. And we'll just print the stack trace so we know what's going on, and I need to spell running right. Then when it's out of the loop, we'll say is done equals true. So basically what's going to happen after I call it from here, once you press the X button, we're going to say um, first we're going to make the frame disappear so the user gets immediate results. We're going to say is running equals false. So that means you might be clicking on this in the middle of this thread. So that means is running will be equal will um, equal false. So it might be in the middle of it, so that means when it gets to the end of it, it this allows it to get to the end of the loop, and it won't run again. Instead, it'll set is done to true. But first, we're going to say frame.dispose. So the is running equals false lets our game use up all the resources it was using, and then frame.dispose releases all the resources that the frame was using. So basically, all of this is a big system for us to just um, clean up our mess. Well, this is going to be wall true because this is going to run forever until we're done. So when it's done, meaning that our dice roller cleaned up its all of its mess, so everything is cleaned up, then we're just going to say system dot exit with a status of zero, which means no error happened. If we did one, then the system would think there was an error. Now, just so this doesn't take up too much time. Then we're going to put the catch the interrupted exception. And of course, we're going to print the stack trace. So first, this is just going to be a thread.sleep command. This time we're going to have it sleep for 100 milliseconds. So 10 times a second, it'll check to see if it's done. So that's it. 
for, um, well, that part. So if we run it now, well, never, um, okay, that was foolish of me. In the, our main method, we'll say main main equals new main, and we'll say new thread um, with main in it, since it implements runnable, start. So now, if we open it up, we should get a nice window that says dice roll at the top. Oh, null pointer exception. Uh, let's see. Graphics 2D image buffer dot get graphics. Well, in this, read image size dot width size dot height. So it creates the image, but it's getting a problem when it's getting the graphics for a null pointer exception. So that means image buffer is null, which means it wasn't initialized here. Uh, maybe we just put this after setting it visible, which honestly shouldn't make a difference. See? Okay, it, sh it did make a difference. So as you can see, um, now there's no problem. When we close it, the program actually closed. This is from the earlier one where it received an error. So that means since it received an error, it wasn't doing anything else. So when we closed out of it, it didn't execute these commands, which means it didn't execute these commands. So um, this thing, I mean, well, this thing I will take care of later. But just remember that doesn't matter. So right now, we can just run it again. You know, this pops up. Since it's called main, we can, you know, move this around. Right now it isn't drawing anything. But the important thing is when we press X, as you can see, it disappears and it terminates. And more importantly, it cleans up any mess we made. Now, right now, obviously, there isn't much of a mess. But let's just say, you know, we did G2 and we'll do fill oval. And we'll say it's at 0, 0. We'll give it a width of 300 and a height of 200. But first, we should probably set the color. So, color dot uh, cyan's a good color. And for some reason, whenever I call colors from color, I like the all caps version. So now, if we ran it, um, that's not working. <laughs> oh, okay. So right now, we're drawing to the image buffer. So what we need to do now is that G two we set equal to gra the graphics 2D of frame dot get graphics. So then all we need to do is g2 dot draw image. Um, we'll do this one and we'll say we're drawing the image buffer. Um, this is where we're drawing it. So right now we're drawing to the frame, the actual window, the things we drew on the image buffer. And this is just the um, just the dimensions we're drawing. So we're drawing it to the frame at zero, at zero, zero with um, a width of size dot width and a height of size dot height. And the same thing for the destination and the source. And there's no image observer, which, you know, people rarely ever use. Then after that, we'll say G2 dot, we're done with you. So now if we run it, we should now see a cyan oval. Yep, there's your cyan oval. Now, as you can see right now, the top of it is taken up by this. So in the future, we will account for the insets of the frame. So right now, 0, 0 is actually a bit above and to the left of the X button right here. But we can just call the frames insets and adjust for that. But not in this episode. Now, this because, you know, um, that's pretty much all we needed to do in this episode. This is all the infrastructure we need. Well, we'll probably add more. Next episode, we'll actually work on the GUI, which will involve, you know, we'll make a new package and put several GUI elements in it since, you know, Swing provided all the GUI elements we need before. So we need to basically recreate everything that we need, that we would normally use Swing for. So we'll make our own buttons and our own labels and our, and our own, you know, GUI elements and our own way of rendering and, um, but we'll use the normal action list listeners that we used before for Swing. But... So yeah, next episode will be all about the GUI, and if that doesn't take up too much time, which I doubt it won't, we'll actually start working on the random number generator in the system. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, 
and I will see you next time in episode two.